What's up, everybody? We are mere seconds away from Bethesda E3 2018. Uh, if you haven't checked out my Xbox briefing, that should be in the description or in another video in my channel. Uh, so uh, we're about to get ready. So uh, let's check it out. This is Bethesda. We come from different backgrounds, from different countries. Bethesda does always we kill us with the opening, like last year about the uh, and different points of view. Uh, kids of the we aren't all developers of the developers, but it takes all of us, every one of us, to make these games. A job we take very seriously. try and break things and fix things that are broken we keep the teams happy and fed we keep our fans happy and on the edge of their seats we keep the books balanced discover new talent and interact with our community most of all we work together as old friends and new. What unites us is our passion for games. Games as diverse as the people who make them and play Seems like a super fun place to work. We're not just living the dream. We're creating it. We are all. Bethesda Softworks, how may I direct your call? Mm-hmm. You can start the show. Yeah, you within two. Who wants to bet Shadow Drop Quake Champions? Please welcome Bethesda's Global Senior Vice President, Pete Hines. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. You sound good? I love you too. <laughs> you look good? You guys ready to go? As Paula said, my name is Pete Hines, and I'm delighted to be back on stage for Bethesda's fourth annual E3 Showcase. Now, we've got all kinds of surprises in store for you tonight, so whether you're here with us in the audience or you're one of the millions who are watching around the world, settle in, get ready for the very best in gaming. Still up. Our theme this year is creates, and it's a theme embraced by our 10 studios spread around the globe, the incredibly talented folks who make the Bethesda games that you'll soon be playing. But as you saw in our intro video, it's not just developers. Everyone at Bethesda is a part of the team that brings our games to life, and that extends to all of you. Because we create the worlds, but you create your own adventures, stories, and experiences, and it's your passion for games that drives us every day 
to strive for excellence. <laughs> the past year has been an exciting one for Bethesda as we released some of the best games of 2017. Games like Prey, Dishonored Death of the Outsider, The Evil Within 2, mm -hmm. Wolfenstein 2. We even released exciting updates for The Elder Scrolls Online. We brought we brought full open world VR with Fallout 4 and Skyrim plus Doom VFR. And we even released our first two games for the Nintendo Switch. So we were thrilled when Metacritic named us the top publisher in the industry with the highest overall yep. review score I believe it. I believe across it. all of our games. But Tonight is about the future. We're here to show you where we're he headed and the games that we're creating that you'll soon be playing, the worlds that you'll be inhabiting in the next year and beyond. So, we're starting with a game that we announced a few weeks ago through our friends at Walmart Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perhaps best known for their low prices and ability to keep a secret. <laughs> So let's get things started with a look at Rage 2. Andrew WK is there? All right! My name's Andrew okay. WK. Like being keyboard. There's some people who are all out, balls out, head banging, and there are some people who are just so pissed with this. They're just like, show me games. I like it. Get a guilty pleasure for uh, Andy WK. Oh, 
And that was rage. No. <laughs> Let's give it up again for Andrew WK, the perfect song for Rage 2. Hi, everyone. My name is Tim Willits, and I am the studio director at id Software. And I'm Magnus Nedfors, game director at Avalon Studios. Magnus Nedfors? And we're here to say That's that fucking awesome Rage name. is back. That's the best name in gaming since Kiki Wolf Kill. Now, we had a ton of crazy ideas uh, when we started planning Rage 2. And we needed the right studio to bring our vision to life. Now, we've admired the open world chaos in all of Avalanche Studios games. And as we're about to show you, they delivered big time. <laughs> Well, thank you, Tim. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well, speaking for everyone at Avalon Studios, this is really a dream to come true for us. The world of Rage 2 is perfect for our style of gameplay. But even more exciting than that has been to work with these guys that did software. These guys invented the first-person shooter. And they still make the best shooters out there. So it's been a really great collaboration to bring you the most insane open-world shooter you have ever played. So Rage 2 transports players into a dystopian future, devoid of society, law, and order. Now, you play as Walker, the last ranger of the wasteland. Now, you know, I can talk all night about our guns, the powers you'll use, the vehicle combat, and of course, you know, the crazy uh, open world. But I know that you are here to see the game. Well, not only do we have Rage 2 playable at our booth at E3, but we've got for you an extended look at the world and gameplay of Rage 2. Cool. Let's check it out right now. Yeah. Asteroid on a collision course with Earth. Global extinction event. 80% of the Earth's population, dead. God turned his back on humanity long ago. It wasn't a war. It wasn't global warming. It was a fucking asteroid. I was born in this shithole. Parents murdered. An orphan of this wasteland. An army of mutants killed everyone I ever loved. All that's left is hate, fear, and the need for survival. You see, part of growing up was watching everything get taken from me. I stood by, did nothing. And now, I'm the last ranger of this wasteland. And there's only one thing left to do! Hello, E3, and welcome to the world of Rage 2. In a moment, we'll dive headfirst into the Eden Spaceport mission, where Walker, our main protagonist, is out to find a rare artifact that will aid him in his quest to take down the Authority. the Eden Space Center. Ah, yes, I forgot to say. It might be overrun by bandits. The Goon Squad, to be precise. 
you must likely slay them first before pulling down the eco pod from orbit and securing the untainted nanotrites therein. Space Center. Keep your wits about you, Walker. The goon squad may look whimsical, laughable even, but believe me, behind their playful appearance, they are very, very dangerous. Well, it's awesome. Sensor activated. It's a ruckus, a crusher, talking <laughs> It can be yours while they flat. Rage. I'm sure that's going to be the uh, the collector edition one thing. It's a lot more fun than the first rage. Walker's gonna get a bit of a boost today. Just like the doc said, forty years. That'll be a problem. Oh, okay. Shit. Abilities, that's sweet. Bethesda Softworks. 
Christian Van Hoos. Okay. How's it going, everybody? I'm Christian Van Hoos, the community manager for the Elder Scrolls Legends. For the, for the past year, we have taken what I think is the best digital card game and made it even better. New cards, new modes, new ways to play, and much more. But we wanted to push ourselves even further. So tonight, I'm thrilled to announce that we will soon be relaunching the Elder Scrolls Legends with brand new, totally overhauled visuals. I'm also very excited to let you all know that Legends will be available later this year on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. But there's no reason to wait to play the game that Apple awarded Best of the Year in 2017. Download The Elder Scrolls Legends for free and join me tonight on PC, mobile, or tablet. And any progress you make in the game will be carried over to the console versions through your BethesdaNet account. And now, let's take a look at the future of Legends and see why this isn't just my favorite card game, but will soon be yours as well. It starts small. One game is all it takes. But legends never stay simple, never stay small. This is action. This is story. This is competition. This is easy to pick up. This is hard to put down. This is a five minute train ride. This is a five-hour marathon. This is for any way you play. This is for anywhere you play. This is for strategy fans. This is for those who want magic at their fingertips. This is for those who want dragons at their command. This is a game where legends are born. This is for you. Made it quick, though. From ZeniMax Online Studios, Matt Firer. Makes me a so still. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'm Matt Firer. I'm the game director on the Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, before I get started tonight, I just want to uh, do a shout out. It was really great we started the showcase tonight with a video highlighting uh, the really talented people that work behind the scenes to make all of these great games possible. <laughs> Whoops. So standing here on stage, I'm representing a whole lot of amazing people at ZeniMax Online Studios that I go to work with every day. It's a great honor and privilege. So. I go to work with them every day, but at night, I go home, log into Elder Scrolls Online, and I get to play games with you guys, the best gaming community in online gaming. We, we are such big fans of what we do. We play the games just as uh, you know, we make them, and, and we play them just as much as you guys do. It's what we do. Um, you know, so you might not know it, but we're right there alongside. I'm playing there with you. I'm running dungeons. I'm exploring Tamriel, questing, crafting, decorating my house, PvPing, stabbing. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> and I'm really humbled to say that the Elder Scrolls Online community just keeps getting bigger. We're over 11 million players now. <laughs> and over a million of those came in just the last year alone. So last year was really great for us in a whole lot of ways. We were named MMO of the Year for the third straight year. <laughs> we released Morrowind, a lot of great DLC, and just last week we, re we released Somerset, the latest chapter in the Elder Scrolls Online. It, it's been, it's been, you know, received with great critical acclaim. Everyone loves it. You get to travel to the island home of the High Elves for the first time in 20 years. Um, it's great for new players. If, in the off chance, you aren't playing Elder Scrolls Online, this is a great chance to jump in and play. Um, and, of course, all you veteran ESO fans are already there. 
but we're not done there. Uh, we make we make DLC every quarter for uh, for and and chapters. You know, content comes out so regularly for Elder Scrolls Online. We're already working on our great plans for next year. But before that, working on the Skyrim. Next DLC coming out is a dungeon DLC named Wolf Hunter, yeah. based on werewolves. <laughs> we release Elder Scrolls Online Skyrim. <laughs> And later this year, we have a story DLC named Merkmire. We're going back to Black Marsh. Cool. So you guys have all been asking for a deeper dive into uh, Argonian lore and culture. You're going to see it later this year. People always say that ESO is real fun. I went into it when it first came out on console, and I just didn't so get into it. So there's one theme so. that runs through all of the Elder Everybody Scrolls knows. Online's content, and that is have great suggestions for me? From the launch game through all the DLC and chapters, it's really, really what, what holds the game together. But it's not just the stories that we as developers create for you guys to experience. It's also the stories that you create together when you play this great virtual world. So I'm going to leave you tonight with a video highlighting just some of the amazing stories and memorable characters that you'll meet on your ESO journey. Thanks, everyone. See you in Tamriel. Yeah, so we always look cool, but I just never got into it. Alright, what are we getting next? Doom, maybe? Yeah. Good, good. I like it. Give me some Doom 2. Do 
Doom Eternal. Okay. I'm glad they didn't go the Doom 2 route, though. Thank you. Because, man, we have too many of the I'm sequels started, that have already happened. Producer, like Star Wars Battlefront 2. And I'm Hugo Martin, creative director on Doom Eternal. <laughs> In 2016, we launched our reboot of Doom and have been blown away by your support and excitement for the game. Thank you. In fact, it's a combination of your passion and our team's love of making Doom that has motivated us to deliver even more. So we're back to announce Doom Eternal. <laughs> An awesome, awesome new sequel to Doom. For the past two years, it's been so inspiring to hear you guys talk about what you'd like to see next. And I got to tell you, we're right there with you. Like, you want the Doom Slayer to feel even more powerful? <laughs> well, we got it. <laughs> you want even more badass demons? Well, there are twice as many in this game. <laughs> you want to see hell on earth? Well, we, we just teased it. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're most excited about is to show you some of the things that you might not be expecting. That's right, including a ton of features that we'll have to save for later because our team will be debuting Doom Eternal at QuakeCon this August. <laughs> We'd love for you to join us live in Dallas, or of course you can tune in online to catch all the fun. But until then, we want to thank everyone who continues to play Doom. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. We're going to Quick Champions. We're finally gonna get a release date for it. And it's out now. How's everybody feeling tonight? Pretty hype? Just like a little hype or like crazy hype right now, right? Let's go. <laughs> hey guys, like, Hi. maybe just a little I'm hype. I'm Joshua Boyle, community manager for Quake Champions. Is that? Thank you very much. Is that Adam Boyce in the Ever background? Since the first Quake title was released in 1996, our games have been shaped by you. That's Adam right. Boyce and Danny O'Dwyer in the now, background. The tradition continues with Quake Champions which has evolved with community in mind and will always be the fastest and most fun multiplayer shooter, period. <laughs> and that's not the only tradition that Quake's continuing. These days, we're hearing a lot of talk about esports, but Quake has been there from the very beginning. In fact, we started hosting competitions at QuakeCon over 20 years ago here for QuakeCon. And this year, we'll expand on our legacy as the original eSport with everything from intense grassroots competitions to major tournaments at QuakeCon and DreamHack Winter. <laughs> We've been doing this yeah. for a long time. Over and we're Adam continuing boys. to build with more competitions for more players than ever before. But I gotta tell you guys, we can't stop, won't stop until we've delivered a game that's fun for everyone. Whether you're a Quake dad or a brand new baby to the arena. <laughs> that's why we just added a bunch of new features to make it even easier for you and your friends to jump in and get good together. <laughs> I guess I don't know, is Quake Champions already out? I We're played still the beta. In early access, but yeah, tonight, early access. we want to welcome all of you into the arena. For this week only, we're opening up Quake Champions to everyone through a trial of our free-to-play version before it even launches. <laughs> Plus, if you get in and download this week, you can stay and keep playing Quake Champions for free even after the trial closes. <laughs> so head to Quake.com and start playing with me and all of my Quake family 
tonight. Don't miss your chance to join one of the most passionate and welcoming communities in gaming. Now, for a taste of what you'll be playing tonight, after our showcase is over, check out our new trailer for Quake Champions. The, uh, the beta was pretty fun when I played it. It's good to, like, it kind of just made me want another Unreal Tournament. But, uh, it just makes me want more Unreal shirt or Unreal, uh, arena shooters in the wild. Getting prey DLC? Hello, E3, from all of us at Arcane Studios here in Austin, Texas. It's been one year since we launched Prey, and we want to send a big thanks to our incredible fan base for your support. We've been so inspired by your passion and enthusiasm, and as a way of showing our appreciation, we are rolling out a huge free update for Prey tonight. Mm. The next time you fire up Prey, you're gonna see three new modes. Story mode, New Game Plus, which was a big fan request, and survival mode, which should be an interesting challenge for our most hardcore fans. But that's just the beginning. We are really excited to tell everyone that we've also been working on a new Prey DLC, an infinitely replayable experience called Moon Crash. It's a new twist on Prey where the enemies, hazards, and loot are all different each time you play. We're so excited. We can't wait to show what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> mistress the longer you're here the harder things are going to get for you let's get to work you spin me right round baby right round like a record baby right round 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 Making a roguelike in prey. Warning. Flooding and electrical damage detected. Warning. Lethal radiation levels detected. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round.
before we begin, yes, mom, I'm still alive. No, I'm not a mimic. Hang on. There. <laughs> I just want to make sure nobody tries to smack you because I saw Pete Hines with a wrench backstage a second ago. <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo. That's very sweet of you. So, <laughs> like all arcade games, Prey is about playing your own way, and Moon Crash is no exception. So you just saw a lot of cool stuff that's available tonight, but we're not done yet. We have one more surprise coming later this summer called Typhon Hunter. Typhon Hunter is a lethal game of hide-and-seek, where one player goes head-to-head -head against five other players who get to be mimics. And okay. just like in Prey, the mimic players can disguise themselves as everyday objects. So, you know, things like a chair, a coffee mug, a space banana, whatever works. But definitely not a coworker, right, Susan? Absolutely not. <laughs> Probably not. No! <laughs> 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 anyway, Typhon Hunter is a tense multiplayer mode that requires teamwork and improvisation and a very high tolerance for jump scares. Before we go, <laughs> I just want to say thanks on behalf of the whole team at Arcane Studios to fun. all of our fans around the world who have played Prey and love it. We made this game for you, and we are constantly inspired by your creativity and enthusiasm. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Please welcome Jens Matis and Jurt Gustafsson. We're going to talk about Wolfenstein Switch. Hello, friends. <laughs> uh, I'm Jens Matis, the creative director at Machine Games. And I'm Jurt Gustafsson, executive producer at Machine Games. Last year, millions of you took to the streets and sparked a revolution in Wolfenstein II, The New Colossus. As BJ Blazkowicz, you rallied the American resistance and you beat the living fuck out of those Nazis. <laughs> Thank you for embracing our game. Uh, we were honored to win Best Action Game at the Game Awards last December. And we are excited to bring Wolfenstein 2 to Nintendo Switch on June 29th, so you can fight the Nazis on the go. That's right, that's coming out soon. And the Wolfenstein revolution continues with our next project, which leaps ahead in time to tell the tale of BJ's twin daughters. Ooh. Set in the 1980s in Paris, Wolfenstein Youngblood pushes the story forward. <laughs> okay. Okay. And because this game features BJ's twin daughters, Wolfenstein Youngblood will be a co-op experience. Ooh. I like so that idea. While you idea. can play it solo, you can also join with a friend to save the world together. The resistance is counting on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Holly Boss, let's check it out. <laughs> Synthy vibes, synthy vibes, I like it. Get that 80s synth. Sis, 
Just like Papa taught us. Cool. Hi. At Bethesda, we're proud of our history of innovation, and that includes breakthrough VR technology that we revealed at E3 2012. Uh. Since then, we've delivered some of the very best VR experiences in gaming, Fallout from Doom to VR Fallout 4 to, to Skyrim, and we're not done. Two of the franchises that we just heard about are going to also offer VR experiences. So, when Prey's Prey. Titan Hunter is released later this summer, you'll be able to experience the competitive move, mode that Susan and Ricardo were just talking about in virtual reality. And cool. It will also include a single player experience that puts you in the boots of trans star employees working to solve puzzles aboard the Talos One space station. I'm also excited to announce a new Wolfenstein VR game. <laughs> oh my God. It's called Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot in which you play a hacker who can take over Nazi robots and turn these war machines against their masters. And our ever-ending quest to bring the message of fuck Nazis to every platform possible. Yeah. Both the Prey and Wolfenstein VR experiences are playable this week at our booth at E3, so please stop by and give them a try. Now, we are really excited about everything that we've shown here tonight, but I know there are a lot of you who are really here or really schools. wondering about Fallout 76. Oh, well, yes, yes I am, but. And I'm pleased to tell you that your wait is finally over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Give he's it to the recipient me. of numerous Lifetime Achievement of course and he is. Hall of Fame awards. He's Give me the game Give me director my dad a in a studio that has won a bevy of accolades and awards. And he's here tonight to tell us what he and his team have been taking so damn long to tell us all about. Will you please welcome my very good friend, Mr. Todd Howard. Praise Lord Todd. Praise Lord Todd. We're all here. Looking good. Oh, it's great to be back at E3. Thank you, thank you so much. I could not be more excited to be here. I want to thank all our fans who came out tonight. And the millions of you watching online. We can't thank you enough. This is actually my 25th year at Bethesda. And I have seen... I have seen a lot of cool things in that time. I gotta say, tonight is definitely, definitely one of them. I got to go to the very first E3 right here in Los Angeles. I know, they're so cute when they're little. <laughs> they're full of energy and life. And then, uh, remember when little E3 ran away from home, went to Atlanta? Yes, you, a lot of you didn't come. I liked Atlanta, or East Coast. And then E3 went through the, the moody teen years and came back and locked itself in its room. <laughs> remember, it was in the convention center, but just in the meeting rooms, they didn't invite anybody. And I can remember literally walking between the halls and seeing nobody. I was like, this is how a zombie movie starts. <laughs> and now E3 has grown up, it's in its 20s, it's more confident, can handle its alcohol better, like all of you. Thank you. So there's a good, there's a good party after this, so pace yourselves. And I hope you're comfortable, by the way. I'm gonna be here for a while. <laughs> and E3 has become such an incredible week of entertainment, but we know that most of you came here for one thing. Todd Howard! Thank you. 
Woo! <laughs> I think it's to see where we're putting Skyrim next. <laughs> Well, I think we have the best one yet. The Elder Scrolls speak of the past and the future. Now, Skyrim looks to the future, to its ultimate no. version. On mobile phones. Alexa, play Skyrim. You're level 57. And see a tall oh level. my god. Climb it. Now, Skyrim and life become one. A mud crab scuttles towards First you. Rodar. I didn't catch that. First Rodar! I didn't quite catch <laughs> that. First Rodar! Your shout echoes all the way to Sovngarde. What happened? First Rodar. That's the <laughs> command for knocking things over. Is there a command for <clears throat> picking shit up? Ever reached that level yet? I'm sworn to carry your burdens. <laughs> the dragon unleashes fire breath on you. Okay. You have 7% health left. Oh, shit. Uh, I, I drink a health po potion. You are out of health potions. Oh, uh, oh uh, how, how many uh, wheels of cheese do I have left? 473. <laughs> okay, I eat all the cheese. I eat all of the cheese. <laughs> all the hey, huh? Um, <laughs> remember what the doctor said about dairy? Yes. Right, yes, of course. You're the greatest. Thank you so much. I eat all of the cheese. Introducing Skyrim. Very special edition. Also coming soon to Etch a Sketch. Oh my god. Motorola Pagers. Oh shit. And your Samsung Smart Refrigerator. He's slim noose. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Had to, had to do it, had to do it. Okay, really, uh, we both know why you're here, and that's to talk about the next Fallout. <laughs> Fallout 76 is a prequel to all the other games, and it's our biggest one yet. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. Set in the hills of West Virginia, you are one of the first to emerge into an untamed and very different wasteland. years after our great nation began, we gather together to honor the completion of Vault 76. This sprawling underground shelter may have been engineered by Vault Tech, but it was built by you. So that if the bombs do come, our way of life will endure. Almost heaven. West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is all there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like the breeze. Country roads, take me Fighting is stopped. 
and the fallout has settled. You must rebuild. Not just walls, not just buildings, but hearts and minds, and ultimately, America itself. In Vault 76, our future begins. Vault 76, one of the very first vaults to open, was built to celebrate America's tercentenary, which is an awesome word, by the way. Like, that's your word of the night, tercentenary. You are one of the very special few selected to be an occupant and spend 25 years underground waiting for Reclamation Day, the day the vault opens. Good morning, Vault 76. This is the Overseer. I hope you all enjoyed the party last night, even those who may have overindulged and overslept. But it's time to get up and get out there. We've been locked away long enough. We always start with the world, and this time it features all new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology. It allows us to have 16 times the detail and even view distant weather systems across the map. Now, most people don't know West Virginia that well. It is an incredible array of natural wonders, towns, and government secrets. This is where the actual nuclear secrets are. And the quest the overseer sends you on will take you through six distinct regions, each with their own style, risks, and rewards. There's plenty of cool new fallout creatures, and we even use the folklore of West Virginia to bring our fallout versions to life. Oh, jeez. We have always wanted to tell that story of what it will be like for you and the other characters who were first to leave the vaults. But there is one big difference with this game. It's that each of those characters is a real person. So this is like games as a service for Fallout. I like it. Because yes, Fallout 76 is entirely online. Cool. Okay. I know there's a lot. Uh, you have like a thousand questions right now. So I'm going to go through them in order. Now, I'll hit a couple of the big ones. First, of course, you can play this solo, all right? You'll, 
You'll be who you want, exploring a huge world, doing quests, experiencing a story, and leveling up. We love those things about our games, too. It would not have it any other way. But also, like many of you, we have always wanted to see what our style of game could be with multiplayer. So many of us talk about experiences in our games, but we've never experienced them together. So about four years ago, we hit upon an idea that is perfect for Fallout. Open world, survival, every person and character is real. And it was an idea that we just couldn't shake. We knew we had to do it and do it in a really big way. Now, I know you may have played survival modes in like some of our previous games or some other online games, and we, you know, people wonder, is this hardcore survival? I like to think of it maybe, it's more softcore survival. <laughs> maybe that should be a new ESRB descriptor. Um, <laughs> death never means the loss of progression or the loss of your character. Your character isn't tied to one server. As a matter of fact, you'll never even see a server when you play. You'll be in a world with dozens, not hundreds and not thousands of other players. It's the apocalypse. It's not an amusement park, okay? <laughs> and you'll be able to join your friends whenever you want and all of your progression goes with you. Yes. It's the number one thing with survival games that gets me. When we think about games, we think about worlds and the choices that you can make, the stories that you create and tell yourself. By creating a wide open world with very few rules, we have a game more than any game that we've ever done where the choices are yours where you'll decide what happens. You'll decide the heroes, and you'll decide the villains. Look, this is a whole is new world me? for all of us here. And fortunately, our friends at vault -Tec have made a series of informational videos for when all of us emerge together. As you venture out into this new American frontier, some of your fellow survivors may not be neighborly. Ooh. Chin up there, sport. Not all Vault 76 dwellers will be so hostile. Find them and brave the new world together. Whether you choose to explore the wasteland alone or with friends, your days will be filled with fun activities. You can run like a rabbit, fly like a bee. No matter what you do, you'll never get away from me because I'm right behind you, baby. Like previous fallouts, you can play this game solo in quests. But the easiest way to survive in the wasteland is to team up and build together. And in this one, you can build wherever you want. And you can also then move that to wherever you want. 
After thermonuclear war, man's towering industrial marvels may no longer stretch to the heavens. What separates man from beast? It is his desire to build. Get started with cats. The construction and assembly mobile platform. Construct your home of the future. With your home secure, you can now craft handmade ordnance at your leisure to give your altercations that personal touch. It falls on you and the ingenuity of your fellows to rebuild the America we hold dear. But don't become too attached too quickly. Monitor your environment for anything out of the ordinary. The home of tomorrow may undergo certain challenges. After a crisis, work with your neighbors to ensure success. There's no I in nuclear wasteland. Document your adventures. <laughs> your memories will Game shape mode. a new I like it. American photo mode. dream. We're getting a photo mode. What's that sound? Oh dear. There goes the neighborhood. Yeah, we love dynamic game systems. So we thought, why don't we put multiple nuclear missile sites on the map? Oh no. And then let all of you do whatever you want with them. Today's episode, Atomics for Peace. When you emerge from the comfort and safety of your vault, the world you know will have changed. Take your friendly old neighbor, Johnny. Rather than coming over to borrow a cup of sugar, he may now be coming over for murder. The time has come to seek out greater means of protection. Nuclear armaments. That's right. Courtesy of your Uncle Sam, these wonders of the atomic age can be found right in your own backyard. But how does a fella like you acquire nuclear weapons, you may ask? Begin by inquiring with the locals. Gently coax them into cooperation. Use a little elbow grease if you have to. In the likely event you don't acquire a full code on your own, do not give up. Search for others who might be harboring a grudge. You'll have that nuclear launch code in no time. With the power of the atom at your fingertips, be responsible and consider your target carefully. Attention, launch sequence activated. Will your bomb land on a rival camp of degenerates? A random stranger? The local wildlife? Whatever your target may be, take advantage of the resulting fallout to gather rare and valuable resources. Yet these rewards don't come without risk. The fate of this new world is yours to command with the power of the atom. We know you've played a lot of our games and a lot of online games, but this one really is unique. We have built a platform, 100% dedicated servers that will support this game now and for years to come. 
And look, look, we know this is new for all of you. It's new for us. It's a little bit scary. And to that end, we're going to need your help. Because yes, we are going to have a beta. Yes. And it is sponsored by our friends at vault as well. The Break It Early test application. <laughs> of course, of course. Because evidently, these online games are hard. They can have some nasty issues. I, I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. I did. I read it on the internet, so it's true. And that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work. Anyway, we know together that we are going to build something uh, really special. And we also know that all of you love our special editions. And we have an awesome collector's edition for you. It starts with a map of the world that glows in the fucking dark. Yeah. And it's great. So cool. Uh, it comes with figures you can put on the map. And it also comes with a Fallout collectible that really I've always wanted, so we made them for everybody to buy, and here it is. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly oh, right. Power Straighten armor. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Ain't no use in diving. What's the use of diving? Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your top. Yes, all of this, the Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition. So you're probably wondering, when is this game coming out? We're excited to say that it's coming out this year, November 14th. Cool. Thanks again for all your support of Fallout. It's been 10 years since Fallout 3, our very first one. And it's been an incredible journey with all of you. We do have another Fallout anniversary that we are celebrating here at E3. It is the three-year anniversary of Fallout Shelter, which we announced and released right here at E3. And we have some cool surprises for you. Fallout Shelter is coming to the PlayStation 4. And because that guy said it, it's also coming to the Nintendo Switch. You can play it with the Joy-Cons or touch controls. And yes, it's still free. Um, and excited to say these versions are coming out tonight. Again, thank you so much for your support of all that we do coming here tonight. When we see how many of you our games have touched, it's incredibly special, especially Fallout Shelter. That game has been played by over 120 million people. Incredible. That is more people than every game that we have made combined. Incredible. It does kind of make you stop and realize that our games can have new lives on any type of device or system. And you know, when we looked at the iPhone 11 years ago, we had a few ideas for mobile games. Fallout Shelter was one of them. And we did have another one that was far, far more ambitious. And we've been building it. Fallout 3 on mobile? And it's in the other franchise that you love from us. Elder Scrolls? Okay. It is called don't talk with the me. Elder Scrolls Blades. Ooh. 
Like Fallout Shelter, we wanted an experience that we were not finding anywhere else. Here it is. Blades, at its heart, is a pure Elder Scrolls game. A massive first-person RPG with console-quality graphics, but with a uniquely mobile experience. Believe me when I say you have to see this running on an iPhone 10. This gigantic screen does not do it justice. You can tap to move or use dual sticks. Combat is all new, and it follows your specific movements and timings. Harkening back to the first Elder Scrolls Arena, this game features both handcrafted and procedurally generated dungeons. And it's not just melee. You have a range of abilities and spells you can use. And of course, you can create your own character and be who you want to be, improving them, leveling up, picking new abilities. And the entire game can be played in portrait mode. That one was incredibly important to us, that you could play it however you wanted. You never know when you'll need a free hand. To hold your coffee, what do you... <laughs> Degenerates. <laughs> and it's not just dungeons. It's incredible outdoor areas. Yes, running on a phone. It really looks and plays incredible. Definitely glad it's not just Skyrim ported over. Bla Blaze has several modes of play. First, the Abyss, a roguelike experience where you can see how far you can go in an endless dungeon. And the Arena, where you will do battle one on one against other players. And the main mode, the Town. This is the hub for your story and quests. You are a member of the Blades, the Empire's top agents. Forced in exile, you return home to find your town destroyed and need to rebuild it. Yes, Blades also features a town building mode. You'll decide what your town looks like and be able to upgrade and decorate all of the individual elements in it. As your town levels up, you'll unlock new NPCs, quests, and more. You can even visit your friends' towns. This... <laughs> this is an Elder Scrolls game that you can play however and wherever you want. And we are going to bring Blades to every device and system we can. Phones, PCs, consoles, also virtual reality. Oh. On mobile, all the way up to high-end VR on PCs. Okay. And what's really cool is all of those <laughs> on PCs. connect to each Not other. Not PSVR. <laughs> so one of my dreams is we'll go back to that portrait mode, which I like to call meeting mode. Because if you're in a meeting on your f playing a game, in portrait mode, no one knows you're playing a game. <laughs> and so with Blades, you could be in a meeting playing Blades against someone at home in VR. Blades is coming this fall for free.
And you can pre-order it tonight on both the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Also, this week, go to playblades.com and register for early access. If you're here at E3, Blades is going to be playable in our booth. So please, come by and check it out. You really need to see it running on the phone. We'd love to see you. Please come by. I just want to thank you all again, all of our fans here, everybody watching online, for all of your support over the years. It is so exciting to show you all that we have coming out this year, and it is an honor and a blessing to represent all of the incredible people at Bethesda Game Studios. We have three offices now in Maryland, Montreal, and Austin. There's a lot of them here tonight. I want them to hear your appreciation for their work. Just the best team and group of people I could ever hope for. Ama amazing. Um, we also thought, since we're all here together tonight and it's yes. so special, maybe we'd do something a little different, too. Yeah. And tell you what we have coming beyond this year. Yes. Do it. We have also been working on a brand close. new next generation single player game. Uh, Starfield? Starfield? Good Starfield? But this one is in an all new epic franchise. Our first wholly original franchise in 25 years. <laughs> yeah, Todd! We're excited to announce Starfield. our next adventure. Again with those synths. Mesmerize me with those synths. Oh, maybe the. That is insane. Yep. Yep. Starfield is a game that we have spent years thinking about and working on. Something we feel uniquely positioned to pull off and that we're incredibly excited about. But we're also building toward the game after that. Elder Scrolls. And it's the one yep. you keep asking about. Yep. Yeah. Scrolls. Give me that new Elder Scrolls. Ah, yes. Give me those trumpets. Elder Scrolls 6. Oh, they don't have a name. Alright, alright. <laughs> okay, actually, now I'm really done. I just want to thank you all for your time tonight. The time you've spent in our worlds, we'll see you out there. Can I get a
another round of applause, please. Another round of applause, please, for Todd Howard. That definitely felt like a, uh, hey, shut up about we it, we're working on it. Like once every sort three of E3s, but boy, when he shows up, he brings the goods. Thanks also to all of our studios and teams around the world who are so dedicated to giving our fans the very best games. If you're a gamer on any platform of any kind, we think we've got something for you. And I hope you're as excited about what you've seen tonight as we are, whether it's a new Fallout game, a new Elder Scrolls game from Bethesda Game Studios that you can play on your phone for free, Rage 2, Doom Eternal, and so much more. We're really excited. Now, remember, if you want to be one of the first to play Elder Scrolls Blades or join the Fallout 76 beta, you need to go to Bethesda Net and register. It's easy and it's free. For all of you here with us tonight, thank you so much for joining. The party is going to continue afterwards. For everyone else around the world, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone have a good night and a great E3. All right, ladies and germs. Uh, better than EA's. So uh, we got that going for us. Um, so I suppose, again... Let's start with the specifics. Uh, the Andrew WK opening. Uh, weird. Uh, I could definitely tell some people in the audience were not happy with that as a starting. It's like, just give me Rage 2. Um, but uh, I liked it. You know, it was kind of a nice little amp up to watch it. And they didn't do it throughout the press conference. But uh, overall, it was kind of like before Todd Howard came out, and did all those announcements, it felt really, really rushed. Well, like, really awkward. Because, you know, previous year, Bethesda just game after game after game after game, even though, like, necessarily, not all of them were what we wanted. I mean, last year we got Evil Within 2, which was leaked again. Uh, we did get the nod to Walmart Canada. Uh, who leaked Rage 2 earlier this year. I think it was like a month ago. Uh, so that was kind of funny. Uh, Pete, Pete Hines and Todd Howard killed it. Um, everyone else just kind of had that awkward personality. I, the Wolfenstein guys were, were cool too. Um, but Rage 2 looks pretty fun. Uh, less Borderlands-y than I would have thought. Uh, but still kind of out there. And I like that zany kind of humor. That's going for. I still don't know if it'll work. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, then they went to Elder Scrolls Legends. Like all the mobile games were kind of lackluster to me. I mean, except for Elder Scrolls Blades. Elder Scrolls Blades looks pretty cool. Uh, pre registered for that when I heard it. Uh, and then we finally got the Doom sequel announcement. So that's, that's going to be fun. Well, of course, we didn't get to see anything from it uh, until. Uh, QuakeCon this year. Uh, so I'm assuming that game is not amazingly far along. Um, if it is, it's holiday 2019. Um, but yeah, kind of in a trend of things that are going to 2019 rather than things that are coming out this year. Uh, Quake had a weird showing. Um, I didn't even know if it was in like a still in a beta. I thought it was either out or just almost out. On oh, the Prey DLC and the Wolfenstein DLC. The Wolfenstein DLC looks really cool uh, with your twins, uh, and you can actually do co-op, which will be nice. Uh, the Prey multiplayer uh, aspect sounds pretty fun, um, and then like the procedurally generated. Uh, DLC, I believe it. they said it released today. Uh, I don't know if that went along with the update. And both of them are going to be in VR, which will be uh, quite a fun time for people who have VR. Uh, Fallout 76 finally have a release date. The one thing we did get a release date for that was this year was in November. Um, and that looks just so fun. Multiplayer Fallout. 
I'm down. So yeah. down is more than I've been for any survival game. Um, I thought it was really funny when uh, Todd Howard opened up with the very special edition of Skyrim. He just knows that that's a meme at this point, uh, that Skyrim should be on everything. Uh, and at first I was like, oh man, Sky Skyrim's on Alexa? That Okay, that gives you something else to do. And then, of course, it turned into a... Like, I was like, I can see that plausible. Um, but Todd Howard and Pete Hines just have that charisma. Um, and it's whenever they get on the stage, it's just... It's the stage lights up. Um, and then, of course, they ended with the snippets of Starfield and Elder Scrolls VI. Um, Elder Scrolls VI definitely felt like a, hey, shut up, we're working on it. You know, but it's a long ways away. Like, that game is not coming out till at least 2022. At least. Uh, Starfield will probably be at least 2021. Because uh, those games, like he said, another thing he said is next gen. So they're, we're already confirmed that we're working on next gen. So don't hold on to your PlayStation 4s and Xboxes too tightly because we're going in the next year or so i say it just brings such a light especially with xbox uh saying what it did about working in next gen that this is coming to the end of these consoles life cycle cycles and they need we're gonna have to switch over uh which is kind of weird since the pro and the uh one x have been released, so that's kind of mixed messaging to me. Um, yeah. I thought, overall, it was a decent press conference. It wasn't great. Uh, there was some great announcements uh, in there, but overall, I didn't feel the breadth that I did for even what they did last year. I mean, given what they did last year, they didn't announce the things that I thought they would. Uh, Evil Within 2 was probably the biggest one, and Prey, but I wanted Prey 2 to come out, just the old Prey 2, and I still kind of envy them for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Todd and Pete, excellent guys. We got Andrew, Andrew and Renee, we had uh, uh, Adam Boys, and uh, Danny O'Dwyer <laughs> in the audience. So, little Easter eggs there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Um, sorry. I didn't, I didn't say this about the last video. But sorry for the video quality. Or not the video, but the audio quality. Uh, I couldn't get my mic to work. As you can see from the Xbox shot, I had my mic in the other side. I can't get my mic to work properly. So I had to deal with the webcam. Uh, but hopefully tomorrow I can get that figured out and we'll be able to have some decent video qu or audio quality. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and as always, take care.